How do you say goodbye to a neighborhood? I'm not talking about when you leave it. I'm talking about when it leaves you. Another turning point, a fork stuck in the road Time grabs you by the wrist, directs you where to go So make the best of this test and don't ask why It's not a question but a lesson learned in time It's something unpredictable, but in the end is right I hope you had the time of your life So take the photographs and still frames in your mind Hanging on a shelf in good health and good time Tattoos and memories and dead skin on trial For what it's worth, it was worth all the while It's something unpredictable, but in the end is right I hope you had the time of your life But in the end it's right I hope you had the time of your life It's something unpredictable But in the end it's right I hope you had the time of your life So this, this street is on the top of the hill that rises up above Hanamdong. You've got Hanamdong on one side and Boguangdong on the other side. And it's the, the hill you can see when you cross the Hanam Bridge. You know, it's a massive landmark, that, that big church up at the top and all the, the jumble of houses and buildings uh, on the way down. And uh, I lived on the street back in 95. I couldn't tell you which building I lived in. I was only here two or three months and it was somewhere on this side. I know that maybe uh, back that way, up this way, I, I couldn't say. Um, I stayed here for about two or three months with a friend when my girlfriend kicked me out. <laughs> if you saw my video about Itaewon, at the very end, I told a story about how a guy got thrown through the window, uh, thrown through a window and then uh, ran to my house while I was out and talked to my roommate. Uh, this was where I was at the time. But even then, I thought, you know, the buildings here were old. We had, uh, there was no city gas at the time. You see uh, the red pipes here. This, this is the city, city gas, the red pipelines. We used, uh, we had a, I think we had an LPG based heater, liquid, liquefied petroleum gas. And we had to replace the canisters. You know, they, they'd run out and you'd have to call the guy to come and bring a new one. I think we had LPG there. It might've been kerosene because I've, I've lived in houses with kerosene and LPG before everybody got the city gas installed. But yeah, and, and this place hasn't changed. I mean, yeah, th there are a number of shops that weren't here before. You know, most of these first floor places were actual apartments, not, uh, not shops. And there's a lot of cool little shops here now that have popped up over the last uh, 10 or 15 years. 
But other than that, I mean, these buildings have not changed. They haven't been remodeled. I mean, a couple of them maybe have been painted, but nothing's been demolished, no new construction. And it's pretty much the same all the way down the hill through Bogongdong and uh, down in this direction uh, toward Hanam Station. I think part of the reason for that, or probably the main reason for that, is the Hanam Newtown project. It was first announced back in the early 2000s, 2003, 2004, and it never got off the ground, which caused a problem for some people. Um, I know a couple of people who told me that they bought apartments in Bogongdong or Hanamdong uh, expecting the Newtown project to, to take off and they'd be able to make a, you know, turn a profit. But uh, that turned out to be a little overly optimistic and they were complaining pretty bitterly about their situation. But as of last year, Development seems to be progressing. And even though it's called Hanam Newtown, it's not just Hanam Dong. Um, there are five zones that have been laid out. One of them actually was very close to Itaewon. It might even be part of Itaewon over by the uh, Yung sang office. But that now has been excluded from the redevelopment project and progress is going in zones two through five. And so right now, this um, unless I'm mistaken, this is zone three. Zone three has had the most progress so far in that uh, I believe this is going to be developed by uh, Hyundai Construction Company. And they've already begun relocating people. That started in October of last year. And so that's why you're seeing furniture put out with the trash and all the uh, the tape on many of the buildings. So after decades of stagnation here, everything here is gonna go, everything. Uh, I've read that someone referred to this in a quote somewhere as the biggest redevelopment project in Korea since Dangun. Dangun was the mythical founder of Korea's first kingdom. And whenever they say since Dangun, they mean basically in English, it's, it's like saying since the dawn of time. So yeah, this is a pretty massive, major redevelopment project. And all the top construction companies have been competing for the contracts. Yeah, this is the view from the church on top of the hill. All of this uh, stuff right below, right below us, immediately below us, going down the slope, that's gonna be gone. I did a walk through here for my other channel sometime last year, I think it was in the spring or maybe the early summer. But at the time, my intention was just to, you know, record part of Seoul that hadn't changed in years. And I didn't know that it was soon going to. I mean, I had no idea that the Hanam Newtown project was getting off the ground or that the residents of the area were going to be asked to relocate now I'm really glad I got through here when I did because it was before, you know, all of this. So now we're coming down into Bogongdong and, you know, it's just one continuous, sea of old villas, what Koreans call villas, the low-rise apartments. People I knew lived over here on this side, different places around, around Bogongdong. And I've walked through these streets 
many, 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 many times visiting people or just getting from one place to another. Look at this place. So for me, this is kind of a sentimental thing. You know, this is one of those changes that, you know, it's, it's inevitable, I guess, but uh, it's gonna take a lot of memories with it for me because, uh, you know, I, it's not just specific places, it's, it's the whole feel of the neighborhood. This, this neighborhood, this is Korea for me. I mean, this was my first experience of Korea, and it's this kind of neighborhood that has the strongest, you know, sense of Korea for me. Um, and it feels like when, when this is gone, it's going to take a part of my past with it. So this is, this is about memory and sentiment for me, but what about the people living here now? I mean, if, if you live here and you own the apartment you live in, well, good for you, you're, you're going to make some money out of this, but if you're a renter, not so good. And I do know somebody who lives in the affected area in zone three over in Hanamdong, very close to uh, one of my old places when my, my wife and I lived, that that house is also going to be in the development zone. But anyway, she uh, is looking for a place to move to right now. She wasn't planning a move anytime soon. But yeah, if you're living in, in this area, your life is about to be upended because, you know, what other part of Seoul are you going to go to now? Yeah, I wouldn't want to be in that situation. As far as I can figure, um, out of the almost 33 years that I've lived in Korea, I've spent about 14 of them living in different parts of Hanamdong and another 12 or so in the surrounding area. The first flat I ever rented in Seoul was in North Hanamdong, just on the south side of Itaewon Street, and it burned down a year later, uh, but that's a story for another day. But that whole area on both sides of Itaewon Street, uh, it was just residential. You know, it had a few of the businesses that any neighborhood would need, like, you know, dry cleaners and video rentals. This was the 90s. A handful of restaurants. There was no real reason to visit there if you didn't live there. But you look at it today, property values are through the roof. The U.S. Army apartments that used to be in the area, they kind of effectively divided Hanamdong into north and south sections. Um, the apartment complex has been demolished and replaced with luxury flats. And there's a nice little walking path next to the apartments that leads directly from Hanam Boulevard into the northern part of the neighborhood, where now you can find all kinds of cafes and bars and boutiques on every back street and alley. And just up the road a little bit, you can watch musicals from around the world at Blue Square. And across the street from there, you can see fine art at Samsung's Liyum Museum. And all over Hanamdong, you can eat great food and even shop for global brands. So, some of the places I remember are gone, but there's still enough of the outline of others to trigger some of the fond memories of living there. So now this neighborhood is not what it was. It has a completely different vibe, but the changes came on gradually. 
and they were easy enough to adjust to. And heck, I guess, you know, I was part of it. My wife and I opened a hot dog shop in Hanamdong in 2012 or 2013. It's still there. Uh, my brother-in-law runs it now and he doesn't sell hot dogs anymore. It's just the bar. For what it's worth, I can still see my past in Hanamdong if I look hard enough. And I don't have to look too hard. It's still there. I can still see it. North Hanamdong, anyway. And it's up on that hill, that, that neighborhood up on the hill, the part that hasn't changed in, in all these years, in Hanamdong and Bogongdong, that part that's going to vanish. A part of me can't wait to see what's going to replace what's there now. Tower Apartments, uh, you can bank on it. And I've read that Hyundai's considering building a branch of their department store in Zone 3. So we'll have a Hyundai department store in Hanamdong. And there'll surely be all kinds of new restaurants and shops to explore. You know, that'll be cool. It will definitely look nicer and probably be a lot greener than it is now. But there's another part of me that knows that my memories of what was there will fade. And when those go, so will the last connections to people who are no longer part of my life. Um, I'll just have my memories of them. And w whatever the new view from the Hanam Bridge looks like, I'm sure it's going to take uh, some getting used to. But... You know, I'm, I'm not going to lose any sleep over that. That's not going to have any big impact on my life, except maybe to, you know, trigger an occasional bout of reminiscence or something. But that's nothing compared to what, you know, the residents of the affected areas are going through now or will go through. And that's never happened to me. But I have seen the stress that comes from this kind of sudden, unplanned move. I've, I've seen it on people that I know who've gone through it. So I wish the best to everyone uh, affected by this. And I hope it all works out for you. So when I heard that the project was going forward and relocation was underway, I felt compelled to come out here and just say something about it, capture it on film, a little bit of it is insignificant amount that I've actually got. And, you know, like I said, when I filmed the walk in Pogwangdong last year, I had no idea how soon things were going to be changing here. So I just wanted to get it on film and show it to you. And before I let you go, uh, in case you didn't see the post I made on my channel's community board, I have a new email address where you can send me questions. If you have any questions about life in Korea, about my experiences in Korea, uh, Korean history, whatever, related to, to living or visiting, living in or visiting Korea, uh, go ahead and give me an email at qna at mikefromkorea.com and I will do my best to find an answer for you. And I will reply with your answer when I have one. But I'm also going to accumulate these questions. And when I have enough of them for a Q&A video, then I'll make one. And I'll accumulate more until I have enough for another one. And I'll keep going. So if you got questions, send them in. And I'm doing it via email because then I can easily accumulate them and keep track of them. So if you're uncomfortable sending questions through email, just drop one you know, in the comments on any of my videos, uh, anytime you want to, uh, but tag it with Q&A so I know that it's it's targeted for the Q&A video. Now, you know, simple questions, you don't have to do that. I can just answer them right there in the comments, but anything that's gonna require, you know, complex answers, long answers, like, you know, do you have any recommendations for places to visit or what do you know about this event in Joseon history or something like that? Um, yeah, just tag it with Q-N-A in the comments, you know, Q-N-A colon, and then write your question. And I will make a note of it and answer it in the video. I won't be able to email you if you uh, <laughs> don't email me. But yeah, I won't use your emails for anything 
except to reply with answers to your question. I'm not going to send you anything else or put you on a mailing list or sell it or anything like that. So yeah, send your questions to me and I will do what I can to answer them. And with that, I'm going to leave you. Thanks as always for watching and liking and subscribing and commenting. I, I just love reading your comments. I, I love interacting with everybody. So thanks a lot. And I will see you next time. Bye-bye. It's something unpredictable, but in the end is right. I hope you had the time of your life.